Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. Not too long ago, uh, Jason Box and his colleagues um, came out with a uh, new peer-reviewed uh, scientific paper called Greenland Ice Sheet Rainfall Climatology Extremes and Atmospheric River Rapids. And I was a bit confused by the title, by the term rapids. I mean, it, it's all about rainfall on Greenland. You know, as you know, most pre precipitation on Greenland falls as snow because it's so cold there. But we're getting more and more of these atmospheric rivers that are coming from the south and uh, crossing over Greenland, causing uh, very, very uh, intense rainfall events. We're also getting a lot of warming of Greenland as the uh, melt continues and it's accelerating the melt, of course. Um, and surprisingly, some of the rainfall is happening near the peak of Greenland, which is actually quite high elevation. It's over 3,000 meters, just over 3,000 meters. Um, so it's very, very surprising that uh, we're getting some of these rainfall events at high elevations on Greenland. And uh, the, the term rapids is used to describe the sort of the filamentation areas where there's very intense, um, almost like rivers of, of rain, rain carrying um, winds, uh, high elevation or high altitude winds, uh, part of the atmospheric rivers that are pushing upslope, uh, bringing, you know, through the valleys of uh, Greenland upslope, uh, bringing lots of, of rainfall. So I'm going to talk about all of these things that are mentioned in this in, pa in this paper. And of course, it's very important because, you know, as, as uh, ice melt accelerates at the poles on both the Greenland ice sheet and Antarctica, you know, we have to be very concerned about sea level rise and about, of course, cro crossing tipping points, um, ab abrupt, abrupt change in the system. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get right into the, the nitty gritty of this paper. Okay, so it's open source. You can just uh, Google the title and bring up the paper and read it yourself if you like. Now before I get into the paper, um, you know, if you just go to Google Images, Google Google Images, uh, you know, look look up Greenland, look up Greenland ice, etc. And you get all kinds of, uh, you know, information um, and articles on on Greenland, what's happening there, um, etc. Okay, so uh, you know, very useful to have a look at uh, some of these images and see what's going on with the people there. Um, also, with um, you know, what's going on with the ice there. You know, from a climate point of view, it's really what's happening with the ice. Thankfully. Uh, <laughs> Greenland, you know, Trump tried to buy Greenland a few years ago. I don't know if that was serious, but thankfully that never happened. I, that's like absurd. Theater of the absurd, if you like. Um, this is, uh, you know, looking at Google images for Greenland ice sheet melting. And you can see, you know, the loss is definitely accelerating. Um, there's dramatic melting going on um, at all parts of the ice sheet um, and of course there's very strong feedbacks you know as the ice melts back um, it brings the highest points of Greenland to lower elevation where it's warmer and that accelerates the ice melting even further that's sort of like an altitude feedback if you like um, so it's definitely you know one of the tipping points and uh, you know, it's very important part of the climate system. You know, when there's no Arctic sea ice left, then Greenland will be the only cold spot left in the Arctic. So I've talked about how the center of Greenland is about 73 degrees north latitude. So with no Arctic sea ice, the center of cold will be offset down from the North Pole region uh, to the, the, the center of Greenland. So not only are the jet streams slowing and becoming wavier and becoming stuck in place and causing extreme weather events to increase in frequency, severity, and duration, and also happen in places they haven't happened before, uh, not only is the waviness changing, but we're likely to have the 
jet stream, uh, you know, orbiting, if you like, or rotating about the center of cold, which will be 73 degrees north latitude, stuck in the middle of Greenland, as opposed to the Arctic. And that, that's going to cause huge uh, tipping point events, on, you know, all around the, the planet. Um, so let's have a look at the paper. You know, there's seven meters of sea level rise tied up in the ice in Greenland. Okay, so the paper uh, was published a few months ago uh, in the summer. So Greenland rainfall is coming to focus as a climate change indicator and from a variety of emerging cryospheric or the frozen world impacts. So this study, you know, goes into details a lot about the precipitation on Greenland. It uses five state-of-the-art numerical prediction systems or NPSs. These are the big models that uh, are used for weather forecasts. And when these models are run long term, you know, with slight modification, they're climate change uh, models as well. They also looked at um, rainfall that was measured in situ, in location, rainfall data from two regions, and this is from weather stations on the, on the ice cap. Um, okay, so there's all kinds of different models, and they looked at what's happened since 1990, between 1991 and 2021. And basically what's happened is that rainfall over Greenland, over the ice sheet, has increased by more than one third for the ice sheet. Okay, so less precipitation following in the form of snow, more precipitation following falling in the in the form of, uh, of of water, of rain, and also in the peripheral um, ice masses. So you know, basically the land around the the edges. So not only has rainfall increased by more than a third on the ice sheet over this time frame. But there's also more of these extreme events, extreme rainfall events, and the, a lot of these are atmospheric river um, related or cause, the root cause, and that's over 300 millimeters per day um, locally, okay? <coughs> and of course, when that rain falls, it melts a lot of the surface snow and ice. It finds its way, it runs into deep inside the Greenland ice sheet through these uh, moulins, these holes or crevices in the ice. Then it runs to the bedrock um, that the ice is sitting on and runs downhill from that into the ocean, causing lubrication of the ice uh, bedrock interface, causing increased um, glacial movement. Okay, so all of these things happen. Um, so the data looks at the interplay of mass conservation. It splits flow around southern Greenland and condensational buoyancy generation that maintains a long flow updraft rapids. They're two kilometers above sea level. So these term, I don't like the term that they're using, but they call it rapids, um, which are rain bands within an atmospheric river that then interact with Greenland, drop water, etc. Okay, so let's have a look, um, a look at the, uh, you know, f figures. Well, you know, I've mentioned solid precipitation, so snow is the main source of Greenland ice sheet mass input, right? Climate warming has caused an increasing rainfall fraction of total precipitation, right? So when you look at the uh, mass balance of an ice sheet like Greenland, right, it's snow on the surface that then um, gets compressed by additional snow above it. So over about 40, 50 years, it gets compressed into ice and it forms the ice in the ice sheet. Meanwhile, you have calving of ice, uh, like the ice, uh, the glaciers on land and go towards downhill towards the oceans where there's, there's ice shells and the ice shells are calving, sort of like unleashing the cork on the bottle so that the on land ice flow can increase. Um, so if we're getting more um, of the precipitation on the uh, Greenland ice sheet falling as rain rather than snow, uh, then there's less ice being formed. So not only is the ice losing a significant mass 
which is a, on, an, on an accelerating basis each year, but there's less ice being formed because there's more uh, rainfall on the ice sheet instead of snowfall. This is a very key point. Rainwater delivery can accelerate ice sheet flow, destabilize snow packs, and alongside surface heating can initiate the snow melt albedo feedback, right? And so this is basically the rain falling on the ice uh, can darken the surface um, and cause increased melting of the ice as well. This is the snow melt albedo feedback. Rainfall extremes can occur as part of concentrated poleward transport of moisture and heat occurring in these atmospheric river episodes, AR episodes. Okay, so uh, these AR episodes uh, promote high Greenland ice melt by advection of air masses over the ocean, including upstream development over the 2020, 2012 record setting summer North American heat wave. Okay, so in the record setting North American heat wave in 2012, um, the very, very hot air was transported northward as these atmospheric rivers went over Greenland, caused very, very high melt, record high melt that year. Record high ice ablation or loss in Greenland that year. Observations during atmospheric river episodes include liquid water clouds near the ice sheet summit, 100 millimeter rainfall at 1500 meters in the accumulation area of the northern ice sheet. So the accumulation area is the area that gets the snowfall, which then, you know, over time accumulates and, and, and becomes um, compressed into the fern and then forms the ice on the ice sheet, which, re, which is the source of the ice on the ice sheet. So now, you know, getting 100 millimeters of rainfall in the accumulation area is very, very significant. It's sort of, it's like, it's like a step change in what's happening over Greenland. Um, they've even had rainfall above 2850 meters elevation. That's basically almost to the peak of the ice sheet, which is about 3000 meters elevation. So the occurrence of these moist, wet ARs reaching Greenland has been increasing. They're happening more and more often, and that's driven by more frequently occurring highly amplified jet stream patterns. So there's a, there's a reference to Francis, Jennifer Francis um, and Skiffick in the 2015 paper. They talked about more and more atmospheric rivers going far north um, this is amplification of the jet stream in the north-south direction. So it's, it's a, the increased waviness or increased meridional behavior, meridional um, characteristics of the jet stream. So in this paper, they look at the rainfall climatology for the Greenland ice sheet and the peripheral ice masses uh, through the, uh, this reanalysis, uh, you know, new and fine resolution data sets, reanalysis data sets, and they compare the newest reanalysis data set, the so-called CARA data set, to four other state-of-the-art numerical weather prediction systems with a four-year set of independent in situ rainfall measurements, rainfall measurements from the glacier, from the ice sheet. Okay, and so they study all of the data, um, and one of the points I sh they should they look at carefully is rainfall gauge errors. So just, you know, how do you measure rainfall in a weather station? You use, it's very, very simple, seems almost too simple, but basically it's a tipping bucket rain gauge sort of system. So here's what you have here. You have uh, this sort of assembly here, um, which pivots on this point and basically the rain comes in, the water fills this bucket here on this side, and when it reaches a certain volume, which is well known, well calibrated, then the weight of the, weight of the water will tip this thing over, and the water will drain out through here, and the other side, then it will be, the other side of the tipping bucket will be elevated, and then the rain will collect in the this side, which when it's elevated, and then eventually the weight will tip it over and it will come in here. So basically you just have counters to count the number of tips and then you can relate that to the amount of rainfall very, very accurately. So here's some, uh, you know, other, other images of, 
of this concept, these, these tipping buckets. And believe it or not, these are used around the world in weather stations. Um, it's a very simple way of getting a electronic rainfall measurement. Here, here's the tipping, the tipping uh, bucket here, if you like. Okay, so it's very simple. Um, it works. It's very durable. It, uh, you know, is fairly accurate. So they have to, you know, make sure that um, it, they just want to measure rainfall. They don't want to measure snow. Okay, so if there's winds, of course, that can affect the amount of rainfall uh, that actually gets into the um, into the uh, device to be measured. So that can throw some uncertainty into the accuracy. The size of the orifice in which the rain comes is an important factor. And they want to ensure that it's not snow. So when you're measuring snowfall, you can have a heater above the bucket which melts the snow and then the water comes in and then it tips. So you want to avoid that measure. You want to be able to distinguish between what is snowfall and what is rainfall with this um, device. Uh, this uh, to measure the precipitation on the glacier. Um, so you basically do that through temperature. If the if the air temperature is above zero degrees, you can assume that it's rainfall, um, and you can have the heaters off so that the snow doesn't get melted and come down. It just blows off the top. So you can actually accurately measure the amount of rainfall versus the amount of snowfall. Okay, so. Uh, basically, um, that's how these devices work, but there's still uh, gauge errors which are then corrected for. So there's various undercatch corrections. Um, in addition to precipitation undercatch, that results from distortion of the wind field around the rain gauge by the measurement platform and the gauge itself. There's errors, other error sources include uncertainty about precipitation liquid versus solid phase. You can simplify the problem by considering only rainfall by excluding cases with hourly air temperatures under zero Celsius. So if the hourly air temperature is under zero, you can say that that precipitation collected is, is snow, um, not rainfall. Okay, so um, there's no evidence that the TR 5251 tipping mechanism is triggered under high wind speed conditions from vibration effects. So, so here's, here's, uh, these are some sites on the ice sheet uh, where there's the rainfall gauges, and you can use those to put an absolute value on the, uh, you know, you can get precipitation. Uh, you know, rain and snow, and you can feed it into your models, and you can get satellite data, etc. So, you know, so on ground measurements, it's called ground truthing to match up and peg uh, the values that, you know, when you collect data from satellites and other sources. So, so this is the ice sheet. This is the land is around the edges, of course, unexposed from the ice. And these are the weather station sites. Uh, some of them are on the land right next to the ice sheet and other ones are right on the ice sheet, okay, at the two different locations. Here's a typical uh, TR5251 rain gauge, the tipping bucket rain gauge that I just talked about. There's lots of other instrumentation at, on the weather station for, you know, these guys here. This, 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 these are sensors pointing down and up, optical sensors. So it's, it can measure the incoming solar radiation. Um, this can measure the outgoing uh, infrared radiation there are, and also reflected solar radiation. There's weather vanes to measure wind speed with the propeller and direction with the vane. This, the precipitation falls into here and, and this is, so you can measure the snowfall and rainfall and distinguish. There's solar panels here, it looks like, to give it some juice uh, instrumentation to upload to satellites, etc. You know, a tripod, there's also an inclinometer because as the ice, you know, you can see the ice is very dark and ablating back and, and this can drop like tens of meters in a year so if it drops unevenly this thing can start tilting over and have an inclination angle and of course that would throw off the rain collection etc so all of this stuff has to be taken into account 
Um, and so what we have here is these are different sites of the tipping buckets, uh, lat latitude, longitude, elevation, various elevations, date of first recording, you know, 2016 to 2018 time intervals, time span of measurement years, and the type of surface type. Okay, so all of this stuff, um, and then you use the numerical prediction systems to get the rainfall. So these are the rainfall models. This is the latest and newest one with the very, with the very tight grid spacing to give you more resolution and more detail. Um, and these are some of the older ones and the resolution is, you know, uh, the grid spacing is higher. So they're not as high resolution. Okay. So that, I guess the main point of this study is to use a the newest uh, numerical weather system model along with the uh, in situ uh, weather stations to find out how much of the rain of the precipitation on Greenland falls as rain, how much falls as snow, because that does a very key thing. Okay, so I'll just go through to some of the results and figures. Um, so these are some of the weather models and some stats on them, how they're correcting for the rainfall under catch of the weather stations. Uh, this is the average tilt of the station. You can see some of the tilts actually reach, uh, you know, up to 60, basically zero to 16 degrees. Okay, so there can be a lot of tilt as the ice um, melts, right? The weather station sitting on top of the ice, as the ice melts back, the station can tip or tilt and you need to correct for that. So there's these correction factors uh, done. So very careful statistics. And here's some of the, this is a numerical weather uh, system forecasting, uh, CARA rainfall 1991 to 2021. And you can see millimeters per year. Okay, so you can see the total mass of the rainfall, the average overall maximum 1207 millimeters per year. Uh, was the max that that was rainfall uh, in the year um, remember this is all this all used to be just snowfall but there's more and more rainfall occurring um, and uh, the lower lobe has uh, 1087 millimeters per year okay so this maximum would be up a bit higher um, and you can see uh, you know so e this basically uh, this this here is between uh, you know one say and one and a half millimeters of rainfall per year so there is you know as you go higher up the glacier there's less and less rainfall per year on, on average okay and below one is the white areas here at the summit this is the the, the 3,000 meter elevation so this whole region of the glacier is over 3,000 meters um, Okay, it's a huge amount of ice on the on the land. Remember that um, this has been there a long time, and it's pushed down the surface of the the bedrock. So how much has it pushed it down? Well, three kilometers of ice it pushes down the bedrock about. Uh, well, the density of the ice is about 0.9 um, uh, grams per mil. And the density of bedrock is about 2.7 grams per mil. The ratio is, is uh, one in three. So 3,000 meters of ice, the weight of it will actually push down the bedrock about a kilometer uh, in equilibrium. So as the ice melts back, there's isostatic iso, iso, uh, rebound of the land over long periods of time. Okay, so this is an area here. 20, in 2012, the total rainfall, they reached 1919 millimeters here. Um, this is 720 millimeters per year in this whole region here. Okay, so the ice just gets slaughtered, you know, when the rain falls on it. This is the rain fraction in 2012. Okay, uh, yellow, some areas as much as 57% of the precipitation is in rain. You know, at the, at the fringes, at lower elevations on the glacier, uh, you know, up here, it's almost 0%. Even these blue areas here are up to about 10% or so. 
and you know if you take this region and expand it to here you can see the green areas these are approaching about 20 percent of the precipitation is in rainfall so remember overall from 1991 to 2021 the model is showing that the precipitation the amount of um, precipitation in rainfall as opposed to snow has increased 30 percent okay um, the average Kara rainfall during 1991 to 2021 is 25.5 gigatons per year with an interannual standard deviation of 7.6 gigatons per year or 30 percent okay um, so the average annual rainfall um, has increased um, significantly and this is the depiction from 1991 to 2021 we've got rainfall amount in the blue so there is fluctuation uh, but it's significantly you know the trend is upwards about a 30 percent increase this is the snowfall um, and this is the rain fraction here rain fraction of total precipitation okay uh, Okay, and here's some more uh, statistics in a table. So all Greenland, the snowfall, 855 gigatons per year. Um, and the rainfall, 25 gigatons per year. So it's still, a, the rain fraction is 2.9%. It's still a small fraction, uh, but it has increased uh, significantly you know, by that 30%, you know, when, when, it, if it was all rainfall, then the glaciers would just melt away and disappear, right? The accumulation requires snowfall on the surface of the ice sheet. Rainfall etches and melts away. You know, some of the rain will, will, will be frozen on the surface after it's done significant melt and lost its heat. Okay, so these are the key factors. Um, it, there's also uh, extreme daily rainfall cases. So in the 31 year period from 1991 to 2021, CARA, the numerical weather simulator, simulates the maximum local ice sheet rainfall up to 448 millimeters per day. 18 days in this time period had maximum daily rainfall above 300 millimeters. And it occurred not only in summer, but also in the winter months. Okay, this is significant. Okay, so this is a rainfall change in millimeters per year increase. So a lot more rainfall around the fringes. But even if you look in these regions here, this is uh, zero. This is 10 millimeters per year increase of rainfall over these regions. And the hash marks are the data is not uh, statistically significant. So here's uh, some ranking of the local uh, daily rainfall cases above 300 millimeters in the time frame from 1991 to 2021. Okay, so uh, 448 millimeters um, of daily rainfall, um, May 26, 2021 at 208 meters um, elevation. And that mass flux was 0.6 gigatons of rain fell. If you take the rainfall amount and uh, multiply it by the area over which it's falling, you can calculate the volume of rain falling and get the mass in gigatons per day. Uh, and so this is ranked from, from the top. Th these are the top uh, rainfall events uh, that are all above 300 millimeters of rain falling in a single day. And you can look at, uh, you know, the spread of, of dates. Um, and, you know, they're happening at different elevations. So the highest uh, elevation was 887 uh, meters high. 323 millimeters of rainfall fell. That was back in 2017. That's like 4.4 gigatons uh, per day um, of the mass of the water, the rainfall that fell. Uh, this is the peak, the highest fell in this region. And uh, the, um, the 887, the highest elevation one, uh, which was 4.4 gigatons per day <coughs> that one fell 
down in uh, this region right here. Okay, so it's mostly in the southern part of Greenland because the atmospheric rivers are coming from the south, coming upwards and hitting that part of the Greenland, of course. First, this is the lowest latitude of Greenland. So this is where we're going to have more atmospheric rivers hit and rainfall event. So, so these are um, ranking of Greenland ice sheet daily rainfall totals above 2.5 gigatons per day. Um, so the highest was the 4.7 gigatons per day. Um, and that one is up, uh, well, that's 4.4 there. So this is the highest um, at 567 meters of elevation. The highest elevation here, 1.5 kilometers high, we had four gigatons of rainfall falling in that location. Um, that's unbelievable. Uh, and that's why 2012 was a record warm year, record melt year. You know, almost all of Greenland was under melt, um, if, you, if you recall uh, that year. Okay, um, this is uh, the peak rainfall from that uh, event, that 2021 event here. There's some maps showing where the rainfall occurred, millimeters per day, you know, well up into the elevated parts of the ice sheet. 6.2 gigatons total rainfall mass flux. And you can, you get that by integrating out the different rainfall amounts in different locations. Um, 43 millimeter peak rainfall, 0.1 millimeter contour of the rain. Um, this is, these are, and these are different models. This is the European model. This is the CARA model um, and the difference, okay? There's some variation from model to model. That's why the ground truthing from the weather stations is very important. This is precipitable water vapor. Uh, so you had this atmospheric river come up hitting southern Greenland. These were the, the winds and the air temperature. Okay, so very, very warm air temperatures up to 16 degrees Celsius is the reds coming right up into the southern part of Greenland causing all of that uh, rainfall, rain on ice event. And this is the horizontal and vertical winds coming through. Um, and you get these different valleys where the winds just come up slope, dropping the rain off. This is a this is what we're talking about by these um, these so-called rapids. Okay, so this is southern Greenland. You have the, the this is vertical wind. So anything above zero is updrafts. Um, below blue below zero is downdrafts. So you get these updrafts here. Okay, so these are the so-called rapids that are coming in that are also mentioned in the title of this paper. So they're part of the atmospheric river phenomena, but there's filamentation within the atmospheric river and you get these updrafts at certain locations which, which bring the moisture high up onto the Greenland ice sheet. Um, here, this is vertical winds. Again, the reds are the, the ice uh, coming coming up. In. This is a, a, a profile here, coming up here, a slice. And this is what we see here, where these so-called rapids come right up, upslope onto Greenland. And here we go here. This is the, these are the rapids here, if you like, uh, updraft rapids here, bringing the warm, moist air right up into Greenland, giving very, very high rainfall totals, high up on the ice sheet, causing uh, tremendous uh, melting and ablation of the Greenland ice. And here's, here's uh, some of the Kara, the 2.5 kilometer grid. Um, and this shows the rainfall millimeters per day in the different, all the different regions of Greenland. It is basically slaughtering the ice. So as these events, as we get more and more atmospheric river events bringing the very moist warm air up into Greenland, it basically cuts through the Greenland ice sheet like a scythe um, and does tremendous, uh, causes tremendous melt and ablation. And this will greatly increase sea level rise as these events happen more and more often. And as they progress higher and higher up into the ice sheet, meanwhile, cutting through the ice, causing the ice to lower in elevation, giving a very positive 
strong um, accelerating feedback effect. And there's uh, some of the gory details of how the extreme rainfall impacts the ice and ablates the snow. Um, so here's, uh, and, and then this, there's a comparison of what was observed in the rainfall and what the modeled um, numbers were. And so the models are still off, but they're getting more accurate. Um, this was wind speeds. Uh, this, this is September 13th to September 16th. This is a very strong oblation, oblation event from the 14th to 15th of September 2017. Uh, you know, wind speeds, air temperatures, you know, reaching, uh, what, seven degrees Celsius. Um, the energy flux going to the ice, the rainfall, um, and the uncorrected rainfall and corrected for those, uh, you know, weather, uh, rainfall precipitation correcting things or the tipping bucket correction. Um, and, uh, the amount of ice ablation, um, how much ice ablation was observed just from that one event. Okay, so, so in summary, uh, this paper is a very detailed, comprehensive evaluation of rainfall over the Greenland ice sheet. Um, the initial step involved introduced a new data set of rainfall measurements obtained from two regions. So this is on the ground, ground truthing from the weather station. They observed uh, regions from uh, the the regions on the fringe of the ice where there's no ice, just land up to an elevation of 893 meters above sea level on the ice sheet. They did under catch corrections, um, corrected the erroneous data, and they compared the data to simulations from five numerical weather prediction systems. Uh, and they used a new uh, a numerical uh, weather prediction system called the Kara system, which had uh, much finer horizontal resolution, 2.5 kilometers. Um, and they looked at the 31 year um, rainfall climatology and analyzed the extremes. How much rainfall fell, uh, you know, the fact that more and more rainfall was falling in these extreme atmospheric river events. And, uh, you know, the, so it's a, it's a really dynamic effect, right? These atmospheric rivers and with the, with the offset jets and so on, um, are, you know, very, they're, they're basically cutting into the ice in Southern Greenland and causing very, very rapid ice melt. Um, so let's have a look. The CARA data provides new details of atmospheric dynamics associated with orographic precipitation okay because the the grid size the horizontal grid size is 2.5 kilometers uh, basically lots of topography is picked up so the effects of that topography on the rain can now be studied whereas before um, the mo the grid size was too large to even pick up these orographic uh, uh, effects on precipitation so they looked uh, in detail at an extreme rainfall episode on 14th of September, 2017. There was strong onshore flow caused by flow splitting and acceleration around Southern Greenland about two, within two kilometers of sea level. There was an offshore updraft jet, uh, 40 to 140 kilometers offshore, formed in an arc around Southern Greenland. Uh, updraft velocity was intensified by buoyancy generation from condensational diabatic heating. So as as um, the rain, as the water vapor in the atmospheric river um, cooled and condensed, it released its energy. That's the diabatic heating, and that caught that heating caused the updraft to continue to be intensified. Okay, so that intensification, that, that um, phenomena was maintained in long, 100 to 200 kilometer long, and basically narrow, five to 15 kilometer wide, and vertically extensive, three kilometer deep, a long flow, so-called rapids, flowing two kilometers above sea level at high speed, above 30 meters per second, for more than 24 hours. 
This caused these huge, intense, north-south oriented rainfall bands. Um, and these rapids occurred upstream and at a distance from the updraft jet. So it's maybe a general phenomenon occurring in atmospheric rivers, but it's the, it's, the, it's the mixture of the atmospheric river with the topography of the surface on which it's going. In this case, the land ice uh, surface of, of Southern Greenland. So this, the surface topography channels, channeling, right? Um, in the valleys of Greenland, in the fjords, etc., it focuses the atmospheric flow entry to the southern Greenland ice sheet with large scale forest and buoyant uplift, contributing to extreme over 300 millimeters daily rainfall events at 750 meter elevation on this particular day. So, they studied this was a good case study. The coastal mountains amplified the gravity waves, the buoyancy generation from condensation enhanced the uplift over the ice sheet. It amplified the gravity ray waves, the vertical oscillations, which oscillated downstream of the mountains in concert with the ice sheet topography. Um, and so, so basically the data resolved these so-called gravity waves. And so it brought huge amounts of heat, right? The rainfall falling on the snow and ice brings huge amounts of, of, of melt. It enhanced melt rates by 16, between, well, by 16 plus or minus 4%. Okay, snowpack heating, uh, percolation of the water through the ice, refreezing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is a very uh, significant uh, paper, um, right? So what we're finding, just to remind you why this is significant, the rainfall over Greenland has increased by more than one third for the ice sheet and its peripheral ice masses. Okay, uh, there's more and more of these atmospheric rivers that are interacting with Greenland. And, uh, you know, as this continues, we can expect an acceleration of ice uh, melt, ice loss from Greenland with the um, corresponding increase in sea level rise. Um, there's, because of the fine resolution of the new model Kara, we can resolve the orographic intensification of rainfall by up to a factor of four. Okay, so the rain doesn't fall uniformly on Greenland. Um, it falls, you know, the, the to, there's, you need to account for the topography of the ice over the land. The topography, uh, you know, the ice is sitting on top of the land. The land has its own topography. The ice is sitting on has its own topography. And, you know, the intensification of rainfall is mostly in the, in the uh, valleys, basically, um, where, where you get these channels of intense rain bands moving up high onto the ice sheet. Okay, so very, very uh, key and important paper on accelerating um, melt of Greenland ice sheets. Thank you for listening.